Hello everybody, it's Brother Dan Colon from First Bible Church, New Jersey, and it's my beautiful daughter Madison, she's going to be my singing partner this morning, and uh, we're going to sing a, uh, an old hymn, it says, it's called I Love to Tell the Story, and that story will never get old, and that's the story of salvation, that's the story of how God, the creator of the universe, God became a man, and he came to live this earth to, to die in your place because you are a sinner. We're all sinner. The Bible says all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. And we need a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. A Savior is someone who saves. Jesus Christ saves us from our sins. And in order to do that, he had to live a perfect, sinless life so that he could be that perfect perfect sacrifice for our sins all the sins of the world were laid upon him the bible says that god made him to be sin for us he didn't know no sin but that we would be made the righteousness of god in him in jesus christ so we're going to sing that old hymn i love to tell the story and that story is about jesus christ I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing. As nothing else can do I love to tell the story T'will be my theme in glory To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and His love I love to tell the story More wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story, it did so much for me, and that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story, will be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story tis pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it more wonderfully sweet I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's unholy word. I love to tell the story, t'will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story. Jesus and His love, I love to tell the story for those who know it best. <laughs> oh, technical, technical difficulties here. We're going to sing, there's one more stanza, it wasn't on the music, we're going to sing it a cappella. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, t'will be the old, old story. That I have loved so long. I love to tell the story. T'will be my theme in glory. To tell the old, old story. 
of Jesus and his love. You know, the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And we're making a joyful noise. It might not be perfect in tune, but it's pleasing to the Lord. And that's all that matters. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Uh, we're going to sing one more song. And we're going to sing the old rugged cross. And we even have some music to it. So, all right. Page 113 on our hymnal. The old rugged cross. Ready? Okay. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross Till my tro trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown in the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross, Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. Thank you, Lord. So I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown That old rugged cross, the cross where Jesus suffered and died. Why did he do it? Because he loves us. He's a good God, a good Savior. And, well, we thank you for this time. Thank you, Madison, for <laughs> helping me sing. And Hello, everybody. It's Brother Dan Colon from First Bible Church in New Jersey. Uh, it's that time of month where you get to share something from God's Word, the Bible. Uh, hopefully... Uh, we can see each other in person soon. Maybe that door will open once all this uh, craziness with the virus and all this business is over with. We can meet face to face and uh, share some together time. But until then, this will have to do. You know, thank God that we have these devices that we can record, make recordings and uh, hopefully be a blessing to you. So it is that time of year. It's Christmas time. Uh, just like to talk uh, a little bit about what Christmas is all about. What the true meaning of Christmas is. What is Christmas? What 
what happened on Christmas? You know, uh, as the world celebrates the birth of Christ, it's supposed to be about, not about uh, all the craziness that goes on. You gotta get gifts for this one, gifts for that one, and parties and everything like that. It has to do with God becoming a man and giving himself for us. The true gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, the Bible says. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 34, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? The Bible explains itself. It, def it says Emmanuel in Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. It says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. So when Mary had Jesus... Jesus wasn't an ordinary child. She wasn't conceived through Joseph, her husband. She was conceived through the Holy Ghost. Because God had to be, Jesus had to be God and man. God had to step out of heaven and become man to sacrifice himself. In Isaiah, back in Isaiah chapter 9, it says, for un uh, chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You see, the world, they think that Jesus is this either this little baby in a manger, or he's this, this guy up on a cross. They don't know that Jesus was actually God. The Bible says that Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. God, Jesus was God, man. Jesus was God, but in flesh. In the Gospel of John, John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, that's Jesus Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Everything you can lay your, your eyes on, every animal, everything that has breath, every every valley, every every star, every every the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the rivers, the oceans, were all made by Jesus Christ, because Jesus is God, manifest in the flesh. Verse four it says, "In him was life." And the life was the light of men. And the, light sh and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. God, God's light shined in this world, and the world didn't recognize it. it still doesn't recognize it. Verse 10, it says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Jesus Christ made this world. Jesus Christ put that sun in the sky. He put the sun in the sky and he, he told that sun, he says, now I want you to get up this time on a Monday and go to bed at this time. And on Tuesday, I want you to get up early in the morning and I want you to go to bed in the evening. And the sun turned around and says, yes, your majesty. And the sun obeyed him. The winds obey him. The moon, the tides Obey him. You see, Jesus Christ is God. <laughs> Go 
Jesus put that sun exactly where he wanted, where he wanted it to be at every moment. He put it far enough away that we wouldn't, that we wouldn't fry, and he put it just close enough where it could keep us warm, just so we could sustain life here. Jesus is God, manifest in the flesh. Verse 10, it says, He was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, his own received him not. But as many as did, as, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them which believe on his name. Verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. God became flesh and dwelt among us. God became a man. In Hebrews chapter 1, book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, it says, God, who at sundry times, who at sundry times and in divers manners, in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, in the Old Testament, God would speak to a prophet, one prophet in a hundred years, two prophets in two hundred years. Sometimes a hundred years would pass, then he'd speak to these prophets. But God says in these last days, God speak to us, speaks to us through his son, Jesus Christ, the word of God. It says... Hath, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Jesus Christ made the worlds. And God became a man. God became a man in Jesus Christ. So when you hear the story of Christmas, this baby in a manger was a God-man, and he lived the perfect life. He lived the sinless life that we couldn't live. We tried it. We messed it up. And because of that, we need a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. God became a man. Why? Because he's perfect without sin. And we're sinners. Our sins and iniquities have separated us from God, the Bible says. The only way God and man could have fellowship again is if, if we had a perfect sacrifice for sin. And that perfect sacrifice had to be God himself in the person of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 53. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, it says, All we, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. God put all the iniquity, all the sin, he put on Jesus Christ for us all. Verse 10, it says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. God made Jesus Christ an offering for sin. When John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ coming in the Gospel of John, he says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. As in John chapter 1, verse 29. 1 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, verse 21. 1 Corinthians 5, 21. The Bible says, sorry, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Talking about Jesus, it says, For he hath for God hath made him, for he hath made him to be sin for us. Jesus became sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus Christ. You see, God became a man because he loves you. Our sin separated us from God.
John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 16. I said it earlier. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He loved us so much that He gave us His Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17. For God sent not His Son to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. The world was already condemned. God didn't have to condemn the world. We condemned, them, we condemned ourselves, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, verse 19, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Verse 36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. God stepped out of heaven in the form of man, and his name is Jesus Christ. And he gave himself for you and for me. That's what Christmas is. God stepped out of heaven. Sinless perfection. He was the God-man. The Bible says he was tempted in every way, just like us. We, he was tempted every, in every way he was tempted. He experienced sorrow, heartache, pain, loneliness, abandonedness. He's felt all your sorrows, yet he stayed faithful. He stayed faithful, and he stayed sinless. The Bible says, again, I quote it again. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God became sin for us. He knew no sin. He didn't deserve to die. That we might be made the righteousness of God Him. You see, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have God's righteousness. You can be saved. Jesus Christ stepped out of heaven so that we can be saved, so that we could have eternal life. He was a lamb to the slaughter. He was a lamb to the slaughter. See, God, why did God become a man? In order to save sinful men. Someone holy would have to die for them, for man. And there's no one holy except God in the form of Jesus Christ. And God cannot die. Therefore, God would have no God would have to become a man in order to in order to be able to save mankind. This was made possible through the miracle of the virgin birth. Although God could not die, the God man, the Lord Jesus Christ could die. And he did die for our sins. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 it says all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him Jesus Christ the iniquity of us all. And God says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, But God, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God showed his love for us, and while we yet sinners, Christ died for us. Knowing the sin of the world would be upon him and that he would have to pay for that sin he would have to go to hell for our sins he did it anyway if you were the only person on earth God loved you so much God loves you so much that he would have done the same thing for you for just one person he would have went to hell just so you could have eternal life
because he loves you so much. The Bible says, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The reason why the wrath of God abideth on him, because if I gave my son a piece of me to die for you, and you rejected it, I'd be pretty angry with you. I made a way for you, and you rejected it. If you don't accept Christ, you're rejecting Christ. And one day, the Bible says you have an appointment with God. The Bible says in Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews it says, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. The Bible also says in the book of Amos, Prepare to meet thy God. You need to prepare, because one day you're going to draw that last breath, and you're going to stand before a holy and righteous God. What will you do with your sin? Over 100,000 people die every, every hour in this world. And they stand before their creator. What will you do with your sin? One day you're going to draw that last breath and your heart's going to stop. My heart's going to stop. I'm saved. I am confident I'm going to heaven when I die. I say that with confidence, not out of arrogance. Not confidence in something in my works, confidence in God's word, when it says, he that hath the Son hath life. I have the Son of God. I have invited Jesus Christ to come into my heart and save me. And if you've never done that, I would highly, highly, I would, I beseech you, I beg of you, please accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Eternity depends on it. Without Jesus, it's hell. It's hell. Hell is real. Please don't go to hell. So as the world celebrates this holiday season, Christmas, I know people are scared to say it nowadays, but Merry Christmas. Christmas is God stepping out of heaven. The God-man, Jesus Christ. Coming the lamb to the slaughter. He went willingly. He went to die for your sins, for my sin. He sacrificed himself for our sins. Are you saved? Have you ever asked? Have you, do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, it says, Thou shalt confess, if thou shalt believe in thine heart, that Jesus Christ died for your sins. The Bible says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is, is with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you if you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, the perfect sacrifice, if you confess it to God Almighty, and tell him. You need a savior. Save me. He's going to save you. God loves you. That's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is about love. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. He didn't have to, but he did it because he loves you. He loves me. Are you saved? When you die, you're going to Go to a literal, visible place where God is, where Jesus is, and all your troubles are over. Or, the Bible says, if without Christ, the other place is hell. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Torment. Don't go to hell. You don't have to go there. Christmas is about Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh, God becoming man, paying the price for your sins. I hope I've made myself clear. Well, thank you for this time, and i just like to close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that this Christmas holiday, this holy day that the world just tramples upon, I pray, Lord, that it would be holy to someone. 
and that they would accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Thank you for becoming a man. Thank you for stepping out of heaven. The God of all heaven and earth stepped out, paid the price for my sins. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, until next time, uh, may God richly bless you. I hope uh, you have a healthy, happy new year. And I hope to see you in person soon.